you know, we didn't actually put any control surfaces on, I should... Oh, when we crashed and blown up! Greetings and welcome to a Kerbal Space Program special video in which I shall be attempting a challenge. A challenge inspired by the old gaming geezer's current Kerbal Space Program series, A Wing and a Prayer, which you should totally go and check out if you've not seen it because it'll put this challenge in context and it's a great series anyway. Uh, in it he is attempting to run through the career using only space planes. Yep, that's right, no vertical launches, purely horizontal launches, which is fantastic, I have to say. And it's a great watch, it's a great series, you should go and check it out. Um, and it will put this challenge in context, because in, in episode 2, he has to attempt a suborbital launch for the first time, with only a very basic set of parts unlocked so far. And his solution was to strap a couple of jet engines with wings to the side of a fairly traditional rocket, which would take off horizontally like a plane, then jettison the wings and fly vertically off into space and come back down as a normal pod would, just under parachutes, which is a very curbly solution, I must admit. But it got me to thinking, could I construct a space plane that would actually fly horizontally off the launch pad, reach suborbit and land horizontally on the launch pad as well? And so after messing around quite a bit yesterday and then sleeping on it and thinking about it a fair amount more, I decided that I probably could, or at least I had a plan that I thought might well work, and so this challenge was born. Uh, and this is the attempt we are going to, with the same science unlocked as the old gaming geezer, as you can see on screen at the moment, we're going to build a space plane that will launch horizontally, fly to the edge of space and a little beyond, do some science, on a suborbital trajectory and then return and land horizontally safely, possibly even at the Kerbal Space Center. Let's see how we do! Alright, and this is it. This is the Whizbang Mark 1, my first attempt. And basically the design philosophy here is just to build a liquid-fueled booster rocket, a standard one that if you launched it vertically off the launch pad should succeed, stick a couple of wings on it, um, and some landing gear, and job's done. Like, it's, it's simple, but, fingers crossed, it should work. And this is uh, five fuel tank pieces, the biggest fuel tank pieces that are available. A couple of swept wings, a couple of winglets on the front, cockpit, and the non-gimbaled engine. Let's see how she goes. All right, here we go. So, as they are song, we've got Jeb in the cockpit. Uh, we're gonna start with a very low amount of thrust to see what happens here. Ready? And we're running the engines. Speed continues to increase. Fuel is going down noticeably. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to keep the engines running low, or should we just... Let's give it a bit more. Let's take it up to one quarter of maximum thrust. Can we get off the ground yet? You know, we didn't actually put any control surfaces on. I should... Oh, when we crashed and blown up. All right, let's revert to the space plane hangar because we didn't put any control surfaces on. Yes, a bit of an oversight there indeed. No control surfaces at all. Um, and of course with swept wings, there's a little bit of a problem with how or where do you actually attach these. Um, so we needed to go back to the drawing board a little bit and have a little think about it. And this is what I came up with. Using the structural wing segments just to extend it out a little bit, it gave me room for the control surfaces and also gives me a much, a much larger wing which hopefully will help with the takeoff and the stability of the craft overall in flight. Uh, bring the wheels back in a little bit because they don't need to be all the way out there. I'm a little bit concerned about the engine getting smacked off uh, on landing but frankly I just go with it as is because it is the Whizbang Mark II. And with any luck we'll actually be able to get off the runway. Here we go. Fire up the engine and give it half thrust for launch. See if we can get some, uh, some lift. There we go. We got some lift. Gear. We're going to lower our wheels, get rid of our wheels. I mean, raise our wheels even. Right, and we're just going to go straight up. Straight up. Maximum velocity. And let's just go to four times regular speed so that we can see this thing accelerating up towards suborbital space, passing 400 meters per second and still accelerating hard. Fuel running low now. And we are, we are at engine cutoff. We've run out of fuel. Are we going to make it to space? Well, look, six, oh, 69,000 meters. I mean, it's going to be less by the time we get there. Not a lot less, as it turns out. We were within a gnat's whisper of the magic 70,000 meters 
uh, limit for reaching space. Of course, we would want a little bit of time uh, actually in suborbital space to perform our various bits of science and stuff. Uh, so ideally, we want a little bit more height than that. But still, for only the second, for only the Mark II, it was very, very close indeed. Uh, let's skip forward to the descent and landing. And we'll descend at four times regular speed till we get a little bit closer to the ground, and then we'll go back to old me. Slowing rapidly now, though, look, as we enter the thicker parts of the atmosphere, the wings, the control surfaces are biting, though. They are biting, and we are coming, look, we are nosing up. I think we might even be able to get this thing down at the space center. Look, if we, oops, if we, uh, if we just bank around, come on, bank hard around, uh, we, I say, I say that. We don't have any we don't have any thrust at all, so I don't think we will make it to the space center, but we can get a bit closer to it. We don't have to crash into the mountains. That's for sure. Uh, it's probably not gonna hurt to bleed off a bit of speed here as well. All in all, I'm very pleased with the way this aircraft is handling. Let's just go back to four times speed so that we can get in a little bit closer to the ground. I wanted to show you this though, because actually it's flying like an aircraft. In fact, a lot better than many of the aircraft I build as dedicated aircraft rather than just as uh, suborbital space plane things. Um, anyway, we're coming in nice and close to the ground now for the final descent, so let's go back to Old Me once again just to get this thing down on the ground. Let's get our landing gear out as we're nearly at the ground now. We're, uh, this thing actually flies really nicely. Really very nicely indeed. It's a beautiful little glider. Flare a bit. Flare, flare the nose, flare the nose. And we are wheels down, wheels down and activate the brakes. And on to the Mark III, which is a slightly extended version of the Mark II. We've added an extra fuel tank section, as well as the Science Junior and a couple of mystery goo canisters so that we can actually do the science should we successfully reach space this time because I came so close and that's whisper last time. I would have been a bit annoyed as if I had actually made it because I didn't have any science experiments. So this time, we're not going to make that mistake. Right, let us get on with the flight. Here we go. As soon as we've got enough velocity for lift, when we get to about 100 meters per second. No, all right, when we get to about 200 meters per second. 250, there we go, and we have takeoff. So let's get the gear up, and we're just going to go vertical. Ramp up that liquid rocket a little bit more. Go completely vertical, and then we'll go to full throttle. We don't want to be wasting any velocity, really, horizontally at this point. And a quick bit of full time speed just to get us through the early part of the launch. Climbing fast. Jeb is happy as Larry. Absolutely happy as Larry. He is convinced that this is going to work. We are well on our way. Passing 10,000 meters. We've got about what, a third of the fuel tank left. 400 meters per second. Continuing to burn on upwards. Nearly there now, come on now, 15,000 meters, they say nearly there, I mean we're, we're not, we're not nearly there at all, engines are continuing to burn, 6,000, 600 meters per second, 700 meters per second, 800 meters per second, can we get to 900, 900 meters per second, and the engine cuts out just as we hit 900 meters per second. What do we got? What's our maximum altitude? 75,000, oh, is it going to be enough by the time we get there though, it's dropping, look, it's dropping as... As I was trying to explain in my excitement, the apoapse is dropping. And the reason it's dropping, of course, is because we're still in the atmosphere and therefore still experiencing drag. But it's not enough. As we pass on through thinner and thinner air inexorably towards space, nothing can stop it now. The whiz-bang Mark III is there. 70,000. And we've hit space. We have hit space. Space actually is at 70. We were so close with the first launch. Can you believe how close we were? Observe the materials bay. Uh, very good. Keep that science. Observe the mystery goo. Keep that data. Uh, we'll do a crew report. We can't do an EVA because we have not unlocked uh, that thing to allow us to do the EVA, so we can't do it. But all that really remains now, I, this is basically challenge complete. There you go, challenge complete on the Mark III. It's a little bit of a cheat because I spent a good hour and a half yesterday playing around with alternate, alternative designs. Um, unsuccessfully, I might add, look, the radial decouplers are still on the wings, look. Are those radial decouplers? I think they are. Oh no, it's, my it's mystery goo! We've got, somehow we've wound up with mystery goo containers stuck in the wingtips. Uh, I don't know how that happened or when I did that, but let's keep all of that mystery goo observation. 
And, uh, and we're just going to angle ourselves down and prepare for the descent here. And we should be coming down, more or less, straight on top of the space center. So, uh, so let's do that. Let's just let this thing come straight back down into the atmosphere. Falling back, we have re-entered the atmosphere now officially. The music has stopped. Descending pretty fast. Our speed obviously will we'll return to around 900 meters per second if we allow this thing to just keep going straight down into the atmosphere. And let's just fast forward as the whiz bang Mark III descends back gloriously straight down towards the space center, accelerating ever faster under gravity. Until, of course, the inevitable. You know, um, we want to think about our return. Now, I'm not much of a pilot in, in Kerbal Space Program, I have to admit. I haven't played around. Oh, we are actually getting some shock heating. All right, maybe shouldn't have come down quite such a sharp angle. Oh, come on, don't, uh, don't, don't fail to pull out of this now. Uh, I should have I should have been a little bit more careful with this. Oh, it's it's wobbling around like crazy. Oh, oh, what's going on? Okay, we're through. We're through the sound barrier. We we are descending and we are slowing fast. Now we actually had, I think that was because we were basically butting right up against the sound barrier as we were as we were coming down. So we were getting all sorts of extra velocity effects and things. But I, I think we I think we're fine here. I think we're absolutely fine. Fine indeed, and descending quite nicely now under the benefits of full time speed as we approach the Kerbal Space Center for our final descent and landing after a successful trip into suborbital space. Let's get the landing gear down to give us a little bit of uh, a little bit more wind, wind resistance. And we just use the rudder to try and bring us back onto course. Come on now, rudder. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Forget the rudder now, just pull up. Just pull up. Just pull up. Jeb, pull up. Jeb, no. Oh, no. <laughs> look, look. Oh, I nearly survived. Bits of it have survived for sure. Jeb himself has survived in the cockpit. He's quite happy. Um, Jeb, let's go and let's go and check. Let's go and check on the... Um, on the rest of the spacecraft, because look, uh, you know, most of it is down safely. You you fluffed, you absolutely fluffed the landing there, Jeb. I mean, you may say it was me, um, and in fact, it was me trying to be all like like neat and lining up on the runway, uh, and not paying enough attention to my uh, my descent angle and just just nose diving into the ground, uh, pancaking so as it were, into the ground. Here we go. Look, there it is. There she is. Look. One of the materials, one of the, the, the studies has actually survived, as has as have the wing ones. We've lost the materials bay, uh, or the little science bay junior thing, whatever it was. But basically, we've done pretty well. We have done pretty well, I think. Let's recover this. And so we end part one of this bonus KSP challenge, which does not replace Just Talk. Just Talk will be back tomorrow in a new, slightly shorter, more condensed format. Um, and part two of this challenge, of course, will be going up soon as well, in which it should be a fairly simple affair, right? Right? And if you haven't done already, make sure you check out the old Gaming Geezers channel and indeed the series that inspired this very challenge.